Down the street, Ed. There it is. Now, tell me. see from Ed Merrill, Joy X Noel. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, that mountain that's just behind there that sort of looks down on Los Angeles, what do you call it? Well, that's Mount Lee, Ed, and right now we're moving up toward the fabulous intersection of Hollywood and Vine. Let's drop down to street level. Well, Grant, our, uh, our cameramen back here who are upstairs on a very cold building out in the open have told me that they would like to trade places with your men there. Well, uh, this they might do. This is the Christmas tree lane, Ed, uh, across the street, the Brown Derby. Pantages Theater, where they hand out the Academy Awards. And let's see if we can find Santa Claus. I can't see him from here. Ah, oh, there he is, Ed. And I suppose you've got Christmas lights on the palm trees out there, have you? Oh, a few, Ed. Yes, we have a few, and uh, that's not one of them, however. Thank but it's very good to much. see you, Ed. We're sorry Merry to Merry Christmas you. from all of us here in Hollywood. Thank you very much. Next stop, Omaha. Our, mic our microwaves leap the mountains. One day we hope to be able to stop off in Salt Lake on the Bonner Pass or uh, maybe in Denver. Our main memory, mine at least, of Nebraska is that uh, great hospitality is always to be encountered there, and when you're driving across the country, you seem to spend most of your time in Nebraska. We also remember Senator George Norris. Hello, Hello. New York. Hello, Ed Murrow. Right, Hello, ahead. New York. Go ahead, Omaha. This is Omaha in the Cornhusker state of Nebraska. It is now 242. The temperature is 10 degrees above zero. We have 13 inches of beautiful white snow, and it's a clear, bright, sunshiny day. Greater Omaha's population, now 275,000. Well, you know, it was our thought that if we were to look out of a window at America two days before Christmas, we ought to go to a church service. And our station, KMTV in Omaha, obliged. Ed, we would like to give you two scenes in Omaha, an exterior with children and an interior with adults. This is the corner of 26th Avenue and Farnham. This tree is on the lawn of the Kunst Memorial Lutheran Church. You know, back here at times we call uh, children like these ragamuffins. What do you call them out in Nebraska? The same thing, Mr. Merrill. Well, now I'm under if we might uh, move inside the church. Yes, sir. The service is already in progress, and the minister is the Reverend Walter Traub. Lord, bless thee and keep thee. The Lord, make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord, lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Omaha. I'm sorry we can't stay with you longer. Thank you, Mr. Merrill, and a Merry Christmas from all of us in Omaha. We couldn't, of course, switch to Chicago without quoting Carl Sandberg, who said, Chicago, hog butcher for the world, toolmaker, stacker of wheat, player with railroads, city of the big shoulders. So we take you now to the city of the big shoulders. Hello, Ed Murrow. This is Chicago. Hello, Chicago. Go ahead. Population out here, five and a half million. The weather today, cold and hazy. Below us, the Chicago River, as you can see. Above it, some of the Chicago skyline. The Tribune Tower, the Wrigley Building, the Palmolive Building with the famous beacon atop. We're going westward along the skyline now to the largest building and area in the world, the commercial buildings at least. There it is, the Merchandise Mart. We have it in Chicago here. And by the way, one of the other largest is here, the largest post office and probably the busiest today, Ed. Oh, yes, you said you might get us in, and there we are, aren't we? Here we are, Ed, on the sixth floor now of the main post office building in Chicago, the parcel post section, that huge slide. You can't see it for the packages there. The belts leading from the various acceptance stations have taken the packages up to the sixth floor. Here a man picks out one package, a defective one, Ed, improperly wrapped, Back to the rewrap section it goes. It costs Uncle Sam something like $10,000 a year, I understand, to rewrap the packages that we fail to wrap properly. Thanks very much indeed, Chicago. These boys are working on everyday holiday. That's the picture here today, Ed, and a Merry Christmas from all of us here in Chicago. Thank you very much indeed. From Chicago southward to St. Louis, across rich, flat land, towns like Kanakee, Farmer City, Springfield, and East St. Louis, a city with one of the greatest newspapers in this country. A city that is half Midwest and half Southern. All right, St. Louis. Hello, Ed Murrow. Go ahead, St. Louis. This is St. Louis, 2.45 Central Standard Time, 
It's a cloudy day with a temperature of 27 in this metropolitan area with a population of one and a half million. Where's your camera, Frank? We're on top of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch building on 12th and Olivet, looking southeast across the industrial section along the Mississippi. Well, what are the smokestacks we see there? Those Union Electric Company power plant smokestacks supplying much of the power here. And beyond that, some 70 miles is where I covered that Illinois mine disaster last night. Uh-huh. next building that you'll see is the St. Louis Civil Courts building. Oh, yes, that was modeled after the Paris one, wasn't it? Yes, uh, and it's right across the plaza from us there, and also municipal courts and the auditorium. Frank, uh, anything special going on in St. Louis today? Say, there's a big Christmas party out at the Shriners Hospital for crippled children going on right now, and we'd like to show it to you. Roger, let's see it. We'll go west now to the edge of Forest Park, the site of the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair, and here in the Shriners Hospital is the Christmas party. This is the time when all of the parents have an opportunity of visiting with these children and wishing them a Merry Christmas just these two days before the great day. And you'll see that they get good care and they're very happy children in spite of their affliction. Thank you very much indeed, St. Louis. And thank you for letting us see the children in the Shriners Hospital. Anytime, Ed, and a Merry Christmas from all of us in St. Louis. Our Middle West was built on rivers. River boats used to go from St. Louis down the Mississippi to Cairo, then up to the Ohio, past Paducah, Louisville to Cincinnati. So let's go now near Cincinnati and have a chance to look at some Americans who don't live in cities. Hello, Cincinnati. Hello, New York. Hello, Admiral. Go ahead. Our voice is from Covington, Kentucky. Come to see us in the spring, Mr. Murrow, and we'll show you our bluegrass. We'll do that. For now, we'll have to let you see it with a couple of inches of snow on the ground. This is a typical mansion where we find Morris Coors, a Kentucky colonel. Well, we'd like to meet him. Is he there? Uh, yes, he is. There he is now, isn't there he? There he's coming in. Aha. Uh -huh. Mr. Coors? It's good to extend to you the hospitality of old Kentucky. Thank you very coming much, Coming to your homes across the land at a time when we're all praying for peace on earth and goodwill toward men, and extending to you from Kentucky the season's greeting. Thank you so very much indeed. Those were excellent looking horses you had out there as well. Now, Cincinnati, could you swing north across the Ohio into the city? Yes, sir, we'll do that right now, Mr. Murrow. And right before you, winding like a ribbon with more than four bridges between Cincinnati and Kentucky is the Ohio River. And those buildings we see, uh, first, the Time Star, one of our newspapers, Crew Tower, where Happy Chandler used to have his office. Then there's the Netherland Plaza Hotel and more Skyline. Anything else you'd like to see, Mr. Murrow? Well, I'd like to stay with you for another five or ten minutes, but unfortunately we're the prisoners of the watch. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Ed, and a Merry Christmas from all of us in Cincinnati. And they tell us that if we laid a ruler from the Mesabi Range in Minnesota to the rich Pennsylvania coal fields, it would hit Lake Erie and just where Cleveland stands on the lake. So now we take you to one of the country's chief inland ports. Hello, New York. Hello, Cleveland. Hello, Ed Murrow. Go ahead, Cleveland. This is Cleveland, where it's 3.48 p.m., 39 degrees, and a very pleasant Sunday afternoon. We have some very interesting shots lined up down at the lakefront, but first, perhaps you'd like some good pictures of the city. Go ahead. Now, as we pan up, you'll see the Terminal Tower, Cleveland's yes. major landmark. And now, as our cameras swing down toward the lakefront, You'll see the Municipal Stadium, home of the Cleveland Browns and the Cleveland Indians, and finally, our lake front. Uh -huh. Now we'll move down to the William G. Mather, flagship of the Cleveland Cliffs Fleet, and our reporter on board, Gil Canfield. And down, down, excuse me, down on the uh, William G. Mather here, we find it's very quiet in, um, in Cleveland in the port. The boats are mostly tied up for the season. It's a wonderful day down here, windy but not too cold. We're here to show you a little something that happens every year in Cleveland, the lighting of the ships. The Cleveland Cliffs fleet lights up for Christmas. There are colored lights strung from stem to stern on every possible line, every spot they can put a light. They're beautiful lights, and at night they shine out over all these vessels you are seeing here. And we end up with the star on the foremast. And now a Merry Christmas from all of us on the oar boat in Cleveland. Thank you very much indeed, Cleveland. I wish that we might come back and see those boats all lighted up at night. There are no politics on this program, but we dedicate the next portion of it to um, politicians, those who have been in Washington and are no longer there, and those who hope somehow that they may be able to get there. 
Some recent events in our national capital.